We begin the Exchange Core Tour 2015 with a real-world example from the South Carolina National Guard. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm here to demonstrate the South Carolina's common operating picture. It's known as Palmetto Vision, or the National Guard refers to it as SCOPE. And I'm going to emphasize some of the successes we've recently had in the Hurricane Joaquin rainfall event, which ended up flooding about two-thirds of the state. Uh, what you're looking at here is the Google Earth version of our mapping system. We also have a Esri-based browser system that also will reflect the same information. I'm going to expand here the National Guard section and bring up their units. All we have here is a status for every unit within the state, and some of them you'll see are activated and some are in their steady state. Uh, we still have units out there doing missions as we speak, and they're tracking all of this information by inputting it into a Web ERC form. The backbone of all of our program is the exchange form, where we transfer information back and forth. Now, I'll just show you as a typical unit here. We have one of our engineering units. When you pop on a click on an icon, you get some pop-up information that's related to the home location as well as some of the equipment that's assigned to the specific unit. We were deployed doing a whole range of services. We've even emac in a North Carolina unit where they were helping on out trying to rebuild some of the roads. And when you get a mission, basically it's a resource request that's come in through the emergency management side, and then they fill out a web EOC form that allows them to create a mission. Here's one of the missions. Uh, the jock will assign the mission to a specific MSC, and then the MSC will be responsible for tasking it to a specific unit. The system is being used by the different departments within state government. Uh, we have the Department of Transportation, the Highway Patrol, the Emergency Management, as well as several others that use the system. We have feeds coming in for power outages, and we're tied in with the Air Guard, as well as the Army Guard. On the civilian side, it goes down to the county level emergency management, as well as we're beginning to get it down to the municipality level. As I'm in right now, the National Guard section, but as you can see, we do have here an EMD section for the state emergency management. And then we also have sections for each, each region and then counties within the region. Now, as an example, I'm going to be turning on our active missions and our completed missions. We have a whole bunch of those as well. And I'm going to go into Web EOC. So now here is a Web EOC board with some of the information already pre-selected. And we're going to create a mission and then hit the Save button. In a moment, the mission will show up the next time the system refreshes. Now, here's our mission that's been just created. And now here's the stuff that we just went ahead and, and put in. That mission assignment from South Carolina is now going to be handled by the Virginia National Guard through Exchange Corps. Hi, good morning. This is Captain Kaiser from Virginia. I work in the J3 as their training and budget officer on the full-time side, and I run the night shift as the battle captain for the state during emergency response. Currently, Virginia does not have an emergency for us, but our brothers in South Carolina are responding to an event over the last 24 hours, uh, based off the projected rainfall and the missions they're receiving, they've identified that they're going to exceed their capacity of their engineering units on hand, including the forces that were already emac from North Carolina. In the pre previous 12 hours, and the three levels, uh, the two J3s from both uh, South Carolina and Virginia have been discussing what engineer assets uh, they're looking for. Uh, they've been working through their civilian counterparts to approve the EMAC and the cost structure of moving forces down there to support them. And I am currently on duty at home. Uh, we don't run 24-7 anymore. And I am simply going to take the units that have been agreed on in the EMAC, as you can see here on the screen, and the capabilities they need for the mission assignment that's there in South Carolina. And we will begin to muster the forces over the next 12 hours and then get them on the road to South Carolina for when they deem necessary. 
the mobility strike team package is what the two states have agreed upon. This pulls up the uh, engineer mobility strike team list that showed all the plan numbers of what type of vehicle they're getting so South Carolina can plan appropriately for fuel requirements, uh, POL and everything. Now modifying the status that is going from steady state operations here into special condition. We're simply telling the unit that's now changing that uh, they're going to be moving on an EMAC. Currently to this, uh, my three and my full-time operators on the J3 are making contact uh, with the various units to initiate. They've already been given their warning order that they're being looked at and to start making plans to respond and have notified the individual service members to move. And now making the change to show everybody in the system that we've you have seen how two states can exchange key operational information through Exchange Corps. At the same time, a federal agency can consume selected information to make national level decisions, as illustrated here by the National Guard Bureau using the military version of Exchange Corps called Keystone. This is Angela Wang of the Armament Research Development and Engineering Center of the U.S. Army. The National Guard Bureau can use the Keystone Exchange Core Web Service Data Orchestration to consume all the information you have just seen in South Carolina and Virginia in order to achieve shared situational awareness at all echelons. Here you see JIEE, the Joint Information Exchange Environment of the National Guard, showing the key information from the event. Keystone Exchange Core allows the filtering of this information so that at state and national joint operations centers they see exactly the right combination critical for their level of decision making. Civilian use of Exchange Corps is illustrated by New Jersey Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness. My name is Scott Costello. I'm the GIS coordinator for New Jersey Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness and I'm going to be looking at using the Exchange Corps back end for cross communication of incidents. Uh, in this case, we're modeling a stor large storm event for coastal New Jersey, and we have a scenario where water treatment plants have been taken out of operation. We have several uh, several water treatment plant sites that are on my local ArcGIS Online account, and these are the ones I want to put into Exchange Corps through ArcGIS Online. So up here in the corner, we have the Exchange Corps tool, and when this comes up, the first thing you want to do is fetch, and that gathers all of the incidents that are related to this particular map. So to add one from an existing feature, you just select Feature Select. We're going to add water treatment plants from the Point Feature class. Add a single feature, and then we click on the one to highlight. In this case, it's the one in Bricktown, New Jersey. Now we have the water treatment plan in question uh, in Bricktown highlighted in yellow. We can create an incident from this feature. And here you see that the tool imports latitude and longitude of that water treatment plan from the data in the New Jersey Homeland Security's ArcGIS Online site. We'll put in the feature name and water treatment plan, the Miller plant. Location is on Forge Ponds Road in Brick, New Jersey. And the reason it is in is due to an outage. So we submit this, and the incident has been created, and now other users can see that that water treatment plant is out of operation and where it is and what happened to it. The private sector uses Exchange Corps through Sabre, the single automated business exchange for reporting. My name is John Mueller, and I am with Target's Global Crisis Management Team. I operate out of our corporate command center here in Minneapolis. And when we have a crisis situation that impacts multiple Target store locations, we need an effective way to be able to share that business disruption information with public sector organizations. To do this, we use a solution called Sabre that uses Exchange Core in the background. And so here you see a sampling of some New Jersey Target store locations with red bullseyes indicating open target stores and black bullseyes representing closed target stores. So now I'm going to demonstrate how we update this information during a crisis. 
as we are able to update or reopen various target store locations. So let me switch to an Excel spreadsheet here. And this shows various data points related to the status of business and where the target store is located. Here I've gone in and updated a few locations from closed to open and have saved the changes. So now I'm ready to upload the new document to Sabre. So as I navigate back to the Sabre webpage, I will select the member login. Then I'm going to select the company that I represent. And I'm now uploading the document that I showed you. So the real value here for Target is that I'm able to upload this data to a single location and automatically share that information with authorized public sector organizations at the same time. Now I've navigated back to the status map on the Sabre website, and you can see that three of the Target stores have reopened. Public sector organizations can also connect this information to existing platforms, such as ArcGIS, WebEOC, and Google Earth. When this private sector information is transferred through Exchange Corps to the National Guard or FEMA or the state for use in their common operating picture or other applications, it lets them prioritize response. At the city and county level, Las Vegas shows us how information gaps are filled with Exchange Corps, here including Fire Dispatch, Web EOC, ArcGIS Online, and the mobile app Spot On Response. Hello, I'm Carolyn Levering, Emergency Manager for the City of Las Vegas. The problem Exchange Corps solves for us is the disconnect between our Fire Rescue Dispatch and Web EOC. Fire alarm status is available on a website, but until it's integrated with our situational awareness tools, that's minimally helpful. Exchange Corps connects the Fire Alarm Office to Web EOC. We see every dispatch and can monitor status across the city. Once on Exchange Corps, the value of the Fire Alarm Office data increases because it automatically becomes available to ArcGIS Online and we see the locations of the responses. Equally important, for the first time, the Las Vegas WebEOC and the Clark County WebEOC are sharing information through Exchange Corps. Finally, the data becomes available to our mobile app, Spot On Response, so that everyone in the field or off-duty has situational awareness of fire and medical conditions. With Spot On Response, we also have the benefit of getting information back from the field that can provide ground truth from responders and others who we trust about conditions around an incident. Exchange Corps bridges our gaps between agencies and technologies that we have not been able to achieve before. Wildfire information provided through Exchange Corps helps the North Carolina National Guard prepare to deploy support aircraft. all that information becomes available on other common operating picture tools. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory uses Exchange Corps to extend the availability of its modeling and drone overflights. Hi, uh, I'm Maggie Glasgow. I am a geophysicist at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and I am the lead on the project called eDecider. We're a decision support project that provides uh, geophysical modeling and remote sensing information following disasters. What I'm going to start with is the uh, landing page of the project. This is where we post uh, the results for the modeling and remote sensing information. When we scroll down the screen there, there's a number of products. And the first one that we um, are going to focus on here is the aftershock forecast. Um, 
And while uh, we also post the, the products here right uh, directly on our webpage, uh, we also uh, uh, deliver this information directly to our um, partners by Exchange Core. Um, sharing the maps um, shows potential locations of aftershocks, and this can help to um, identify uh, potential locations where there might be risk of um, damage um, and where you might not want to um, set up your um, uh, response areas. And here we see that aftershock information provided by NASA through Exchange Core, now available in Google Earth and other common operating pictures. The next product that we deliver um, correlates um, possible um, damage from the shaking to critical infrastructure. What uh, we're highlighting here is locations uh, that may have been damaged in, in the earthquake, and um, these layers can be delivered through Exchange Core to show um, whether or not they are in a um, certain damage state. Using the Open Geospatial Consortium Map Context standard, Exchange Core brings that information directly into Google Earth, exactly as NASA provided it, as well as into ArcGIS Online, seen here with the same information provided by the NASA models. Where there aren't individual structures that are identified, we also have um, damage models um, that show where um, building damage or um, injuries or casualties um, may have occurred at the census tract level. And this is um, provided by our partners at ImageCat. This can be uh, shown on the web page, and uh, we also provide this on Exchange Core. Through Exchange Core, the census tract models show up here on ArcGIS Online and are integrated with other data for analysis. Another one of the products that was generated for Capstone is the UAV SAR uh, interferogram, and this is a complementary um, piece of data um, that is an airborne um, radar that is flown um, very rapidly after events. Uh, this was flown after the NAPA event to show how um, the ground changed um, after the earthquake and help to um, prioritize resources. And in a second, you're going to see this information available on the California Earthquake Clearinghouse's mobile app. In 2015, the California Earthquake Clearinghouse was recognized as a National Homeland Security GeoConops Best Practice. My name is Amber Lipsky, and I'm the National Homeland Security Clearinghouse. What we're doing is starting to build what we call our virtual clearinghouse. It's going to allow people that are out in the field to provide real-time information to decision makers and others in their own EOCs and be able to view that information and to combine it in with their own information for better situational awareness. So I'm on my mobile device and I'm out in the field. I can see the NASA UAV star in the background. It's helping us to direct our field personnel to take a quick tour. So here is a um, report of a gas line that crosses the fault and potentially damaged and requires an observation. If I want to get directions, I can click on this little icon up here and it gives me directions from where I currently am. There's a number of observations that are that show up and we can share information from the field. Somebody takes a picture and they can show information that, that decision makers can have. And I'm going to um, take a look at some of the California Geological Survey data. And California Geological Survey is my organization, and we provide regulatory maps on specific earthquake hazards. Here's just uh, some examples of some of the types of information that CGS provides. These landslide this landslide inventory data pops up that provides information to the person out in the field. They can go out and look at those slides after the earthquake has happened to see if they're still active. And here is a really nice map showing information pulled in by, from a number of different sources. So we have the EDA cider from JPL providing infrastructure data and damage, um, reports out in the field, somebody providing a photo. We have the Clearinghouse Exchange Core feed bringing in live data from, from the field. And this has been combined by somebody in 
who's helping out remotely, somebody in Walnut Creek who has expertise, who's combined all of these elements in addition to the fault layer. So now you can see a really nice picture of everything that's going on, and it gives it to you in real time. The California National Guard J-2 Intelligence Directorate concludes this Exchange Corps tour for 2015 with this assessment of their experience with Exchange Corps for military civilian shared situational awareness. Captain Megan Stromberg, uh, Deputy J-2 for California National Guard. And from my perspective, uh, during Art and Century 2015, the J-2 tested Exchange Corps' ability to get us critical data from civilian agencies, we needed to ensure that the Adjutant General's priority intelligence requirements were met. We specifically saw Cal EPA's ammonia release and California Geological Survey's liquefaction zone data, which we wouldn't have been able to re receive without the Exchange Corps. We also had imagery that we analyzed in our common operational picture, which ideally should be data that federal, state, local agencies that are involved should be able to view in their own common operational pictures. And we can receive in our common operational pictures and share those assessments in developing understanding of the environment and the damage, et cetera. Finally, one of the areas we are focusing on is in our ability to exchange non-geospatial data. So for timely and effective essay, assessment, and decision making, we need critical incident reports, or even just basic data from reporting from the ES or ESS which, when fused by the J2 with other data, become critical and useful for our leadership to make decisions. Or it also gives us threat awareness to our own units deployed in the area of responsibility. So overall, Exchange Corps likely will give us this capability through the testing and learning that we've done in an effort to improve data exchange in California to 